Hello, welcome to a special extended edition of the 31 Days of Howling Beasts. Why is it extended? Because the weekends suck for me and I got really exhausted and really busy. So I'm cramming three film reviews into one show with some other added goodies to it. Um, you, you'll hear about those really soon. Uh, first up, how are you? How's your, how's your Halloween season going? I hope it's going splendidly putting your decorations up if it's not up not up already um getting ready for the impending freeloaders i mean trick-or-treaters uh to come to your door <laughs> well anyway <clears throat> you know it's this time of year as i'm recording this uh, halloween kills comes out a few days away from now uh people are very excited about it i'm lackluster on it i'm going to watch it and you'll probably get a small review on one of these episodes in the in the future um Good or bad? I, it might really be good. I, I don't know. But I tell you what was good. I'll give you a couple small spoiler-free reviews of a, a couple of starters to series that I've watched. <clears throat> One of the, both of them came out yesterday, actually. For, from I'm recording on a, on a Wednesday here. And they came out Tuesday. Both on the Sci-Fi Network, or the Siffy Network, if, if, if you will. Uh, one of which was the, the Chucky series, the long-anticipated Chucky series. We talked about this for like two years now or something. And the development of it, and Don Mancini having his hands all, all over it, and what do I think about it? Well, I, I, I dig it, but uh, if you don't know anything about it, <clears throat> sorry again, guys. I'm gonna give you a quick, uh, quick o, you know, opener to this. Basically, this kid, um, this 14 year old preteen, uh, this is gonna be arguing with people. Like, these kids seem way too mature to be 14 years old. Um, he finds a doll. Uh, this takes place in Hackensack, New Jersey, the, the hometown of one Charles Lee Ray. And uh, it's sort of celebrated. It's him being the, the local psycho and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but Jake, Jake is this kid who uh, wants to be an artist and he's a, a homosexual. Fancy that. He, he, a closet of one. So he takes a lot of shit for that. And um, he finds a doll at, at, at a garage sale and he buys it. And, and it's Chucky doll. It's a good guy. And it turns out to be the Chucky, because right away, you know, it doesn't waste any time saying, you know, hey, Zach's, Jake's got this cat, and Chucky is, uh, he's very wary, very wary of this, 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 this doll. It, it, cat knows he's alive, boy doesn't know he's alive. But, um, yeah, that's that's the series you're getting. This uh, young guy, Jake, he has his own struggles with his own sexuality and bullying. Bullying's a big part of this, and... Chucky uh, doesn't like people messing with his his keeper, obviously, because he wants to play hide the soul eventually. It's not said, but you know how these fucking movies slash TV shows go. I don't want to give you too many too many uh, plot points of the episode, but um, you get a lot of like uh, fake out. You know, eh, is he gonna kill this person? But no, it doesn't happen. You do get one kill in this episode. And it's okay, but I got a feeling it's going to get a lot more brutal now that uh, you sort of know what Chucky's agenda is, you know, with this kid by the end of the episode. But all in all, it's, um, if I had to, like, you know, give you an assessment of it, it's a great start to the series. It's a great start to uh, ch check it out, and uh, I ho hope this does something for you as far as saying, hey, go check out Chucky on the Sci-Fi, uh, you know, network, and uh, USA, respectively. Comes on Tuesdays at, at at ten Eastern, nine nine Central, and um, it's 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 really enjoyable for for a Chucky fan. They have Brad Dorf doing the voice, of course, because why wouldn't you have that? There's another reveal that I will not give away, but you know, thing uh, shape of things to come. If you've been reading anything, because you know the internet doesn't cause they keep anything a secret anymore. Who's going to be in the series? You know, there's going to be some series regulars coming in the series. It is hinted at that in this episode, and uh. Yeah, I can't wait for episode two. I, I can't wait for it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, hopefully it was as spoiler-free as, as possible. It could be a nice little opener for the Chucky series. Second thing I watched, because uh, Hulu plays it right after it, I, I had no desire to watch this show at all. Let me tell you, and sometimes I think it's better to go with no expectations. But the Day of the Dead series, you know, same lettering as the Romero joint. It says, inspired by, you know, George, George Romero's film, on the poster, and <clears throat> let me tell you, the opening of this 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 episode, this uh, first episode 
or episode zero, as they're calling it. It's like it's like a pre- like a prequel episode, I guess, of what's going to happen, what's a shape of things to come. Uh, has a woman who you find out is the mayor in like the 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 same scene or the next scene, um, brandishing a rifle and, and blowing off the head of a zombie uh, as a part of this horde that this, this these two guys are running away from, and says the words. I, I and I paraphrase myself. This is what the Second Amendment tastes like. Tastes like motherfucker. So this he's real, uh, you know, gun toting Republican type person. So don't let that turn you off in the in the very first scene of this happening. Because apparently you can say the the f word on Sci Fi Channel now, and if it's on late enough, maybe that's the thing. Because there they dropped an f bomb or two in the in the in the Chucky episode too. But anyway, it, it goes to that. And it goes to. Earlier, as they say, and I don't want to give too much away, but there's a, a digging site involved that, that, that helps jumpstart the zombie apocalypse, and a funeral home that has, like, the patient zero of the zombies, I think, because they all start to wake up all at once, really. But I think this uh, this digging site has something to do with it. But there's a really cool tie-in, because there's going to be multiple tie-ins. I've read articles about this, because, you know, the internet can't leave shit alone. And you, you, once you watch the episode, you'll be curious, is this going to be tied into the movie? I'm going to say yes, it will, because the uh, director, creators, slash whatever you want to call it, said that there's going to be multiple tie-ins to Day of the Dead, and one of which happens when a police officer goes to investigate something that's inside of one of their digging sites. And uh, I think you guys will be as pleased as I was to, to see what happens and to hope, hope and pray it goes somewhere cool. You know, within the Day of the Dead universe, and the practical effects on the zombies look really good. I was, I was, you watch a lot of CG makeup on The Walking Dead. I'm telling you now, this makeup on here is, is better than The Walking Dead's makeup for the fact that it looks like real prosthetics. So if you're turned off by The Walking Dead and Z Nation wasn't your bag, it was my bag. I gotta tell you, Z Nation was a lot of fun. Better, better than The Walking Dead for me because I had a lot more fun with it. But, this looks really good. The characters all together do not suck. That the two young male leads, I think they're going to be a lot of fun together. You know, killing zombies or whatnot. First up was action packed. Leads up to something. Again, same thing with Chucky. These are both recommended to me for for you guys, by the way. And I can't wait for episode the next episode for either one of these. Again, on, on sci-fi. I mean, this is this is a wonderful time for horror people for for for. People get inspired and do something, and imagine that, you know, especially with Chucky, it's, it's in Don Mancini's capable hands. So as nobody's really, like, holding him down, go check out Chucky and Day of the Dead. I would like to know what you guys think about them, especially Day of the Dead, because, I again, no expectations at all. I had no no intention on watching it. It played right after. Uh, the Chucky, like I said, I almost turned it off, and I'm, I'm glad I didn't, because I had a great time with it, uh, Go check them out. Tuesday nights for both of them, I'd imagine. Um, back to back. But, um, yeah, that's it. And I hope I didn't spill too much for you guys. But let's get to the features at hand. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I did, a, I did, a, I watched a couple of these films. Because, you know, you, you kind of have to if you're behind on stuff and you get people. So I watched another British film called The Beast in the Cellar. Here's a trailer if it's available. <laughs> Terror stalks the countryside and holds the community in a grip of fear. Well, I've never seen anything like this before. Never. Neither have I, Superintendent. Human, animal, or animal? Joyce, Joyce, he's gone, he's gone! What is the sinister secret of the beast in the cellar? Oh, my God. Did they get anyone? Catch anyone? No, but someone saw a thing getting away. Thing? It was a girl saw it. She thought it was an animal of some kind, but she couldn't really tell. Darkness cloaked the mystery and the shuddering nightmare of the beast in the cellar. It's all right, Joyce. I've done it. I've done it. I've, I've buried him. And who have you been burying in the middle of the night? He can see us. He can see in the dark. Get to the telephone. I can't. I can't. The 
beast in the cellar brings to the screen the chilling performances of two great ladies, Beryl Reed and Flora Robson. I've got to tell them now, Joyce. You do understand, don't you? I've, I've got to. If you think it's best, Ellie. Dare you go into the cellar and uncover its gruesome secret? Uh, your basic plot synopsis is from 1971, by the way. Soldiers in a rural English town are being brutally murdered by an unknown creature. Two sisters living nearby realize they might understand what's happening. Uh, the secret is they do understand what's happening because uh, this has one of my favorite tropes in it. And that's the secret freak trope, you know, where they have something hidden away that it, it, and it escapes, you know. It happens in Phenomena. So in Phenomena... You get a monkey wielding a... Uh, this is a Dario Argento film, if you guys don't know what it is. You get Donald Pleasance. You get a monkey wielding a straight blade razor. And you get a secret freak. All in one movie. This one only has a secret freak. But let me tell you why this movie is, is worth your time. It, it might be seem a little dull and boring to you in the dull, like the slower parts. But I think it's all very well explained, you know, why and what this creature is. These two sisters, it, it, it kind of reminds you of, like, two older sisters who, who are together all the time. You know, one's really jaunty and wants to do stuff. One's really stuffy. You could tell she's the older sister. Um, well, their father, uh, who they covet very, very much, was uh, a soldier in the big war. So I think that they live on some kind of compound because they constantly have soldiers coming by the house. And soldiers are constantly in the area. So I'd imagine they're protected by some kind of military installation. Well, anyway, you, you get into it, and uh, these these men in uniform, and, and this uh, this uh, this becomes very important later. Why they're the men in uniform, and why are they being attacked? Are being attacked by this by something? The, this this beast, and it, it's uh, first of all the scenes where, where they they shot, you know, the the, the beast attacking remind me very much of like an American World from London, a, a very brutal, you know, like, like very. Quick, like almost like shaky cam, almost, but it works really well because within the shaky cam, they show you the brutality of this creature's slashes to their to their bodies and stuff, and it's really really fun to watch. And they're shot incredibly well. But when the kills happen, the, the the sisters seem over. They seem really concerned, especially the the younger sister, who's looks at the older sister and says, "You know, well, you know, it's happening again." Kind of deal. It's one of those deals. Because they're fully aware of uh, what could be doing it, but then they soon discover that this thing yeah, <laughs> that they're holding in, in the cellar, kind of, that they feed, you find that they're feeding this thing, uh, has found a way to escape, and this is how they're being attacked. I don't want to give a girl crazy amount of this film, because it really gets into why this thing, is this, this, this creature, is um, doing these things, and why he's so hateful towards men in uniform. Uh, it turns out to be, you, you know, that, and it, this is a beast film where they get this, it's not really a beast at all. It's a feral person. And it's really cool how, how he becomes a feral person because there's abuse involved and, you know, ignoring the problems involved. I, I, it, it's really hard for me to, to get into this film without giving spoilers. So I'm trying not to give spoilers, but I'm telling you, it's really worth your time because the twist, the twist is really neat and, Really fucking tragic, you know what what you can do to to a, to a human person and make them turn a certain way, and um, it's it's very emotional. And the fact that they they turned a blind eye to to this person because the, their father said so. Basically, their father was a very stern military man, and they made them keep this thing away. And uh, I, again, they give a lot of exposition towards the end of this movie, and it's pretty good. So. If you haven't seen the be- uh, uh, the Beast of the Cell, you can't find too much information on it, unfortunately. You guys should check it out. Uh, it's a two ninety nine rental on uh, Prime Video right now. You guys can watch it there. Not really available on YouTube. But, um, yeah, if you haven't seen the Beast of the Cell from 1971, I'd say check it out. It's it's fun. It's, it's a good time. Uh, next up in this, this, this band of reviews... This short stack of reviews is a film called Beast of Blood. And here's the trailer if it exists. Now, from the world of the gruesome and grotesque 
comes your most horrifying meeting with nerve-chilling fear. It's an unbelievably terrifying experience. But you must see all this for yourself, if you're brave enough. Horror walks the night as the half-dead creature causes savage death and destruction. One promising result of this phase of the experiment is that the pernicious side effects of chlorophyll on the body itself have been arrested. In the meantime, the body is alive, but is merely vegetating. It cannot be activated without a guiding intelligence, which cannot be provided by a mechanical device. On the other hand, the Ramon's head cannot as yet be safely returned to his body. So you've gone back to experimenting with human beings again? Oh, yes. Your original judgment has been thoroughly vindicated. I'm other than ever. You'll see an orgy of bloody terror as a mad fiend transplants human heads in the cave of horrors. It's more fantastic than science, more shocking than fantasy, as you see a super struggle between life and death, all to find the forbidden secrets of the weird and sinister scientists of doom. forget the creature without a head, controlled by an insane artificial brain. When you see the most shocking screen experience of them all, Beast of Blood. All right, Beast of Blood, uh, a.k.a. Bestia de Sangre. Uh, I'm not sure why it's in Spanish. Anywho, um, this film can be found on YouTube. And if you're interested in a Filipino monster movie that kind of really doesn't go a crazy amount of places, you can come check this out. Because if you don't know anything about Filipino filmmaking, go watch a film called, uh, uh, a documentary film called Machete Maidens Unleashed. You'll learn all about the Filipino film market in the 70s. This was made um, within that system using its people and using its settings and it's directed by one of the most notorious and, and starring no no he's he's directed he might be i think he's starting in summer two though uh eddie romero is, is the director of this film and he helped write the screenplay he made a lot of these fucking filipino monster movies and, and helped with the action movies too um nobody really to speak of that i know of that's been in this film maybe, maybe you want to look it up though but your basic cheap plot synopsis is a mad scientist creates a monster, and after its, but after, after his head is cut off, he keeps it alive in a serum he has invented. Now, if that sounds very familiar to you, there are point or pl- there are plot points in this film because he, he, he's got the the body on, 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 on tied to a, a gurney, and he's keeping this head alive with like a combination of like chlorophyll and like uh, I think mixed with blood because it's called Beast of Blood for Christ's sake. And it, it reminds you of a certain film, and I'm not sure how how deep the Dr. Herbert West story goes in the the Lovecraft um, original story, how far it goes with the Dr. Hill's head being still alive, but I have a feeling that Stuart Gordon saw a film like Beast of Blood and said, you know what, I'm going to take a little bit from this, because there are points in this film where this mad doctor who wears eyeglasses and an eye patch, which makes them all that much more devious and badass, is... Uh, keeping this this thing that he's created alive and uh he's talking to it it's talking back to him so i I had shades of reanimator within this movie and if 
if you watch this and you, you say, yeah, I, I see shades of it too, but this was like 15 years earlier. And I, I have no doubt that Stuart Gordon saw part of this and, and took some inspiration there. And that, that would be awesome because this film as a whole is pretty dull. <laughs> I mean, it starts out with um, these guys coming to the island, whatever the, whatever the island is, and being attacked by this the shadow of a, of a creature. Their, their boat gets attacked and... Some guys get killed and thrown overboard, and this thing, in turn, loses his head. Your, your titular beast of blood. Uh, does it lose his head? No, it doesn't lose his head. There. I'm not sure when this fucking thing lost his head, because it doesn't lose it at the beginning of the film, because you see it get up and walk offshore, which is the widest shot of the beast of blood that you will see throughout the entire film. There's someone that's not detached from his body. So, at some point in this film, this thing loses his head. It, 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 I mean, there are so many dull parts of this film... There's a reporter lady who who comes to the island. Of course, she wants to see, you know, what's going on with the native people and the local culture and blah, blah, blah. And she gets kidnapped by a mad scientist, of course, you know, not not to get eaten out by the severed head. But I imagine the beast of blood, you know, maybe a generous lover. I, I have no idea. But there's a whole mission there to go grab her and, you know, and they, they got to save her. This reminds you of a lot of, plot points of like cut and run where the lady people get ki- Americans get kidnapped so they got to go rescue them in a commando mission not knowing the scientist has a groovy head on a, on a tray it's he talk, constantly talks to and oh man it, it goes there and there's a lot of like bad gun play and bad and bad mar- I think a little bit of bad martial arts in there anyway it ends up with them making it to the doctor's area um the creature inevitably you know, gives them off his, his, his table. I'm spoiling this for everybody. I don't, I don't even care. Because uh, this is not like, hey, you should run out and go watch Beast of Blood. And, you know, much like anything else, you know, the creature helps destroy its creator because he's basically taunting him through this whole film, through this severed head. Like, yeah, you know, yada, yada, yada. Much like, you know, Herbert West in, in um, Reanimator. He's taunting Dr. Hill. So eventually Dr. Hill is going to go get up and start some shit. And he does. But that's much more interesting than this film, which is a Filipino film from 1970 called Beast of Blood. Either you like this sort of thing or you don't. But I will say it's been done better. Um, don't seek this one out too crazy like, say, hey, I need to spend 90 minutes of Beast of Blood. Well, let me tell you, the poster is a lot cooler than the movie is. And that that is that and this is this, man. I, I, I can't really say a whole lot more about it. Except for, uh, you know, the whole the whole um, Stuart Gordon possible influence. I would love to know if that's a thing. So if you're, you're on this episode and you know more than I do, uh, y- yeah. <laughs> uh, this is fun here. The cave Celeste Yarnall used as, as a dressing room was also used as the men's latrine for the male cast and crew members. So your dressing room smelled like piss in the Philippines, apparently. So check that out. Promotion of the film included ads resembling folded $10 bills being dropped from from bus city streets. So they, they had to really try really hard to get promotion for this film by dropping fake money down from the skies to say, Hey, come see Beast of Blood in all of its glory. Because the poster will say, Hey, hell yeah, show me Beast of Blood. It looks like it's going to be the shit. It's got a, a monster with his, his severed head. It's smiling back at his body. It looks like you're having a great time, but I'm not saying you're going to have a great time with Beast of Blood because it's pretty dull. I mean, for a monster movie, your monster is tied up for 90% of this movie. So he ain't doing nothing but talking back to his, cre- to, to, to his creator. And that's fun if it's entertaining, but it's not that entertaining. I mean, I mean the head looks good, the body looks good. It's not the creature that don't look bad. It's, it's the plot, or lack thereof. It's just, it's just really dull. So don't don't seek out the beast of blood, but um, the next one, the next one, I may I may have a treat for you because uh, our man from um the podcast on on Haunted Hill, uh, other guy, the 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 other guy who also makes tunes and makes podcasts with it with his wife as well, the High Strangeness podcast. He did not mention during his review, so I'm mentioning it right now. Um, go check it out. But he. On the whole list that I gave these guys, chose the only Nazi plo- exploitation film on the whole list, and he's wondering why the results happen. He did The Beast in Heat 
from 1971, I think it is. Which is, uh, uh, Nazis make a beast and uh, the beast loves women. A lot. And they, they do it. And he's going to do it right now. Take it away. Gav Chucky Steele, a.k.a. Gav Whore. Right now. Hello and welcome to this review of The Beast in Heat from 1977. I am Gav from the podcast on Haunted Hill. Uh, 1977 was a year, in fact, I was born. Um, so that, I came out into the world, along did this movie. Now, this film was, if you don't know about it, it was on the uh, notorious banned list of the BBFC, which is the British Board of Film Classification, to the point when people were getting arrested if you were to a video supplier and you were renting out to someone a film which was on the list, uh, the banned list. And um, you could actually be arrested and fined and even put in prison. And I think an example of someone was done. Anyway, that's something you can look into if you don't know about it. Most people do know about it. But there's all these movies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, stuff like that. And they were looking at movies thinking that they those films were uh, putting thoughts into people's minds um, and would ultimately get people to go ahead and try and do some of the things that they would see in the films and replicate them. Now, this film, I don't know how you would do that. I don't think you how you're going to go along and just start doing this. Basically, this film... Well, let, let, me, let me just throw a little plot at you here. A beautiful, uh, nefarious, senior female SS officer, Doctor, uh, creates a generic mutant human beast. The beast is a uh, squat mongoloid sex fiend which she uses to torture and molest female prisoners while the Nazis watch. It's a weird movie, but that's what it is. I don't imagine that someone in the 80s was going to watch that and go, right, I'm going to get a dude in a cage, get him horny as fuck, get him on some horse tranquilizers or something, and then get women and bring him into the cage for them for him to molest and rape, uh, so we can all watch and get off on it. I, I, you know. Anyway, they deemed this not very uh, suitable for the public, and um, I would say it's possibly not deemed suitable for the public. In fact, it's is it's just a bit of a the story is. It's really weird. It's like, if you can imagine, um, in Glorious Bars, as everybody knows, the Tarantino one, obviously that's an original movie as well. It's a group of guys, all flat caps and straight sort of gardener jacket type things, running around with little guns, shooting people as like a little squad of resistance um, uh, against the Nazis, generally. That was what the films were. If you're watching Glorious Bastards, you know exactly what I mean. This this has this storyline going along in this movie. And um, th- that's kind of all right. It does get a bit boring and slow, and I don't know why it does. But then they do throw in some stock footage from another movie of Nazis attacking them and having all these fights and stuff. And that was all right. That was not too bad sort of stuff. This, but this, 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 this film, I don't know, they they threw in this, uh, this graphic uh, torture porn stuff. Um, I presume just to uh, get people to watch the film, then go along the storyline. I imagine the original writer was probably like, oh, you know, I I wrote the right story, then goes to watch the movie and goes, what the fuck have you made? What have you fucking gone and done with my fucking story, my script, you cans? You know? But um, this is a a weird one, yeah, but ultimately the the graphicness of the film is what got it banned in England, but that's only England, you know? Um... Yeah, I think this... I'm going to go with Italian. I don't know. I better check this stuff out. I should really know this stuff if I'm doing a review and be really honest, shouldn't I? Um, it was uh, Italy, yes. Um, it starts off with a big Nazi sign. That's the start of it on black. So, you know, you, you, you're into a good start of a movie. Any movie, you've got a Nazi flag there, haven't you? Or a Nazi sign, um, which is quite random. Then the first shots we got are of... Someone with a, a close-up camera of a really hairy arm and someone getting some pink goo injected into them, which we find out is the the, the mongoloid man, as they class him. This guy just wants to get really horny. Imagine, like, if you've seen a Serbian film, the dude is ramped up to have sex. This is like this guy in a cage, and he's just like, oh, I want to fuck anything. It's, yeah. Um... Uh, He's there, and basically it's it's trying to go against the... or go with the, what the Nazis were doing and the experiments and stuff like that. And you've got this woman, this uh, Nazi officer, and she 
It's kind of like, all these ideas of ways to do things and torture people. But this is her idea. So they, then they sit there and they watch women be raped. And they get off on it and they start getting their breasts out and they start getting off on it. And it's a really random film. It's just like, well, let's, what, what could we like? Let's have a drawing board, a, a dartboard on the, on, the, on the wall. And the dartboard had different segments, you know, like pizza slices. And it's just like a segment saying, uh, uh, let's, let's get a, a bucket with rats on it and put it on a woman's stomach so it eats into them. Yeah, okay, cool, do that. Let's do one which is electrocuting their vagina. Okay, let's do that, let's do that. And let's throw the dart and see where we get. Oh, I've got electrocution by vagina. So, you know, it's it's that's what you're getting with this film. You're not really getting, you know, you're not getting some classic movie. It's not... Uh, it's not something which you, I, you know, I'm not gonna say. Yeah, I recommend it. I don't recommend it. Uh, I, I recommend it if you you're going through some fetish of wanting to watch Nazi exploitation films. Um, the only way you can get away with that, because obviously it's got rape scenes in it and stuff. The only way you can kind of get away with viewing these rape scenes is because the production is of a low quality. You can obviously see it's a staged act going on um, because obviously any visual. And this of rape stuff like that. it's just it's not, not something that people want to see um so you know you've got all this going for it this this gratuitous stuff they're just thrown out there. yeah fucking throw it at the wall see if it sticks yeah brilliant and that's kind of going kind of long so we keep coming back but then this resistance group, they go and blow up a bridge and stuff. So this 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 captain or whatever he gets he gets a phone call and he's like, you, "You're a dick. Your men have just like left, lost this bridge. We need this bridge. What are you doing?" So he gets so the woman who's a doctor who's injecting the the horny bees and getting horny herself is drafted in to help this guy and to help him clean up the act. So they they come up with the idea of going out to get all the uh, all the other villagers in the town, the women, the children, all that sort of stuff, getting them. And um, uh, bringing them along because that eventually pull out the resistance, and they'd be like, "Oh my, that's my mother! You cannot do that!" And, and that's how they think they could draw them out because they don't know who these people are. And at one point, they get a baby. There's a baby crying. They throw the baby in the air, and they machine gun a baby. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a, ma- a baby is machine gunned. Um, uh, you know, at this point in the film, you're kind of almost expecting it, and it's obviously just a blanket going up in the air, so you know it's not a baby. But, you know, when the film came out, it would have been quite like, oh, but around this time, like, you had a lot of these films come out anyway, so people were probably onto this thing. And, and to be fair, this is why they put it in the film. They thought this would get people in the seats to go watch the movies. You know. Um, yeah, there's lots of naked people in it. There's cock, there's boobs, everything. It's just naked. It's just everywhere. In everyone's face, it's, you know, there's shagging going on left, right and centre. Um I, it's just, yeah, it's that really. The the, the, the Neanderthal type looking squat mongoloid is, he doesn't ever say anything. He just grunts with a wide angle lens really close up to his face. Really close up to his face. Like really wide and stuff, you know. And uh, I mean, that's how they sort of shoot that. Um, the, the what else really goes on? Nothing. There's a, lots of that sort of stuff happens. I wrote a shitload of notes, but I'm not going to go through all the notes. Like I was going to do a massive review of it. I don't even know why I did that. But yeah, that's kind of the idea of it. And it's, yeah. at one point, my note does say bored. I did get a bit bored of it. It's like oh, I was just more talking and talking and talking. And as a priest knows what's going on, the priest knows who's the actual resistance people. The the they get tortured. They say go see the priest. He knows. So they go see the priest. The priest is like, yes, I do know. Then the priest kicks ass for the Lord, beats up a few people. Um, yeah, it's just loads of people. Just um, Here's one of my notes. Three naked men hung up and a lieutenant gets naked and sucks him off. Uh, so the guy next to him is really pissed off that he's not getting sucked off. So he, he, he protests about this. So she gets a knife and chops his knob off. That's just a note. That's one note I've just picked out of a load of notes right there. Just that little one. And, that, and, and you know, the, the beast really rips and eats pubic hair. There's another note. What, what, what's going on there? Um, you know, 
the, the, the lady though she does get come up and some resistance do 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 a siege they go into this building and they fucking take people out um and they the beast managed to get hold of the uh, the lieutenant the uh, the lady and pull her in and she said no he's going to kill me and he just starts buggering her to, to death basically and she, she's just ah, oh, he's gonna kill me, and they just they they get a machine gun and just shoot them both. Uh, then we get this one bit right at the end, where one of the main resistance, uh, kind of uh, Benny Hill, uh, Charles Bronson looking motherfucker, he, he goes outside. He's one of the sort of main resistance guys. He goes outside and finds his child dead, and just puts him in his arms and just walks off. And they go, "What are you doing? What are you doing? You're gonna get shot!" And he just walks walks off, and he's starting to say. This is the bit, the only bit of the film where it looks like, wow, this was actually, that could have been like a quite a powerful thing here. And he starts saying, you, my son, you will have wings, you will fly. And it just starts saying all this stuff. And it's like, whoa, shit. And then an explosion, poof, cloud smoke, and he's blown up. And then it just says, Finn. And that's the end of the film. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the review of The Beast in Heat from 1977. Do I recommend it? I, like I said, if you're into that sort of shit, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you know what, probably don't bother watching it. Uh, on IMDb, I'm pretty sure it's a bit of a 3.7. Oh, it's a 3.7 out of 10. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, sex, nudity, severe, violence and gore, severe, profanity, mild, alcohol, drugs and smoking, mild, fine, intense scenes, severe. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Beast in Heat from 1977. Oh, man, wasn't that fun, kids? Uh, <laughs> let me tell you. Um... Men who who look like Randall Tex Cobb, and this guy, this guy in this film looks like Randall Tex Cobb, and you know, fo- foxy ladies should not mix. Although I, I hope Randall Tex Cobb really get really uh laid some pipe back in the day when he was a amateur boxer slash actor, because we all love that guy. But who can't who can't love a beast in heat? He, he uh, he's just especially horny. You can't love that guy. He, he's impossible to love. But um. Thank you, Gav, for for sitting through that that Nazi exploitation movie and uh, doing it up for us. Uh, tomorrow, um, usually I go, I go, I go, but I went, I went, I went twice on this one. So the next one that you will hear be from my man Nudie, uh, Neil Lemoy himself, uh, the master of the NFW commentaries, and and uh, it's that horror, okay, uh, commentaries, and you see. I say commentaries like the man can't do a review. The man can do a review. He's done reviews of me. He does a review on your next episode for the War of the Colossal Beast, which is um, which is a, a sequel to a film called The Amazing Colossal Man. One of those films is better than the other one. But Nudie shows us some love, and you will get that on your next day of the. <laughs> I did it again, guys. On your next day. Of the 31 days of howling beasts.